A 68-year-old woman, completely sane, was admitted to a psychiatric clinic by her son, who no longer wanted to take care of her. Marilia was born and raised in the city of Lisbon, Portugal. Coming from a dysfunctional family, she lived with her mother Caterina, who suffered from serious psychological problems, and her stepfather Ernesto, who was nothing more than an alcoholic and opportunistic man. Marilia's father lived with another family and had abandoned her when she was around five years old, which contributed to her mother's bipolar problems. At the age of 16, Marilia dropped out of school and started working to save money. She was very afraid of staying at home with her stepfather, and at the first opportunity, she thought about leaving that place. When she was 18, she met Fabricio at a dance in the city, and with the innocence of her youth, she quickly fell in love with him. After a few months, the two started to live together in a small house in the city. Everything flowed perfectly well, and they were in the best phase of their relationship. But a simple piece of news changed everything. Marilia discovered that she was pregnant. She was extremely happy and couldn't wait to share the news with her boyfriend. As soon as he arrived home, Marilia had bright eyes and a beautiful smile on her face. She couldn't hide so much happiness. The boy thought it was strange and asked what had happened to make her so excited. Static, Marilia told him she was pregnant. She was convinced that he would be happy with the news. After all, now a little angel was growing in her belly. But like a bucket of cold water, he released his painful words. He asked if she was going crazy because that couldn't have happened and that he would take her to a clinic the next day to solve that problem. At that moment, Marilia's world collapsed. She couldn't believe those words. I would never have imagined such insensitivity on Fabricio's part. It would be challenging, but she was determined to do everything for her baby, making it clear to the boy that she would carry the pregnancy to term, whether he wanted it or not. Fabricio didn't like that answer, but he didn't say anything else, remaining quiet and thoughtful throughout the night. Marilia had hopes, because probably when her belly started to grow, Fabricio would change his mind and accept her pregnancy. The next morning, as soon as she woke up, she looked to the side and didn't see Fabricio. She thought he had gone out to buy bread for breakfast, but was shocked when she came across the closet that was empty of any of his clothes. With a tightness in her chest, she began to cry. She never imagined that he would be capable of abandoning her, especially now that they would form a family together. She began to feel a tangle of feelings. I was distressed, and I felt very scared. In her mind, a whirlwind of thoughts made her even more insecure. But when she placed her hands on her belly, she felt such a pleasant feeling and such great joy that she never knew how to explain it. From that moment on, she swore to herself that she would do everything she could to give her son the best life. The months passed, and Marilia's belly grew. She found herself completely alone, and all she had was her baby. With each passing month, it became more difficult. Marilia worked during the day in a family home, and at night, she worked as a waitress in a restaurant. Sometimes she would secretly cry during her rest break. His back burned with pain, and his feet were extremely swollen from standing all day. Bad thoughts came into her head, making her think that she wouldn't be able to handle everything she was going through. But as a consolation, she looked down and saw there the whole reason for her effort. In the end, it will all be worth it, she thought. The nine months quickly arrived, and on October 1st, Lucas was born. He was a beautiful boy and very healthy. Alone, and with a lot of struggle and determination, Marilia raised Lucas. He was her greatest treasure. Despite earning very little, she never let him lack for anything. He worked day and night so he could save a little money, and he dreamed of giving his son a good education. The years passed, and as soon as Lucas finished high school, Marilia told him with great pride that he could choose higher education, as he had saved his entire life to provide him with a good education. The boy was very excited and told his mother that he wanted to study medicine. Marilia was very happy and proud of her son. She always thought this profession was very noble, and having a son who was a doctor would be an honor for her. As soon as the school year began, Lucas entered medical school in Lisbon, and because he was very intelligent, 
he got a scholarship that covered 50% of the tuition fees. With his studies, he barely stopped at home. When he wasn't studying, he was at a friend's house, having fun at parties, or dating. With each passing year, she saw Lucas becoming more and more distant. She really missed the old days and how cool Lucas was with her. He always said she was the best mother in the world, and he had her as his safe haven. There was no better moment than arriving home after an exhausting day and finding your little one running towards you, with their eyes shining with happiness and with the most captivating smile in the world. That moment was restorative for Marilia. But now, after her son grew up, she couldn't even remember the last time she heard the word mother. It was painful for Marilia to see her son so changed, but I believed it could just be a phase he was going through. Maybe after graduating, he would be more mature and spend more time with her. The years passed, and Marilia sought a little comfort in books for her loneliness. She loved writing and saw writing as her passion. She dreamed of having her book published, but found herself facing so many expenses that there was not enough money to invest in publication. She made a point of always putting her son's needs first. After six years of hard study, Lucas graduated. But what was supposed to be a day of celebration and happiness for Marilia became the day she cried the most in her entire life. The graduation ceremony took place at 4 p.m. on a Sunday, and only at 7 p.m. did Marilia discover that her son had already graduated, but she had not been invited. That moment was such a disappointment for Marilia that she was left in tears. With immense pain in her heart, she waited for her son to arrive. She wanted to hear from Lucas why he didn't want to invite her. It was around 11 p.m. when the son arrived. When Lucas explained the reason, Marilia couldn't believe it. She would rather never have heard that. His heart was already in pieces, and with the boy's words, everything became even more painful. Lucas said he was sorry, but the place would be full of influential people with high purchasing power, and the presence of his mother, with a simple and humble appearance, could harm his chances of getting a good position in a renowned clinic, which belonged to Lucas's father. One of your friends. This would be an excellent opportunity, and he didn't want to let anything get in the way of his plans. Marilia was extremely hurt by her son. She never expected such an attitude. Lucas had transformed into a completely unrecognizable person. Over the years, Lucas became a highly sought-after doctor. He specialized in psychiatry and went on to a successful career as a psychiatrist. In addition to his growing career, Lucas also married Carla, a successful real estate businesswoman. Marilia was already 67 years old when she asked her son for help as she was living alone in a small rented house and the amount of her pension was not enough to pay the rent and feed herself. Lucas lived in a beautiful apartment in an upscale neighborhood of Lisbon, and although he showed some reluctance, his wife encouraged him to accept the idea, pointing out that the house was spacious, and that there would be no problems with Marilia moving in with them. Marilia felt happy on the one hand, as she could be closer to her son, but she spent most of it sad, seeing the indifference that Lucas had towards her. A year had already passed since Marilia moved into Lucas's house. As time went by, her reflexes were no longer the same, but she was still lucid and continued writing her book. Things started to change. After Marilia bumped into and broke a very valuable vase in the house, Carla was furious and asked her husband to take some action, as she couldn't stay there any longer. The man then thought about putting her in a home for the elderly, but he knew that Marilia would never accept it. So he had the idea of waiting for night to come, to put his plan into practice. What he did to his own mother was unbelievable. The next day, when Marilia woke up, she thought she was dreaming. She saw strange people around her, and some nurses. Worried, she tried to understand where she was and what was happening. In fear, she began to cry and desperately seek help. A nurse, seeing her agitation, told her to calm down, as everything was fine. She explained that they would help her there, but that she needed to cooperate and take all the medications that were prescribed for her. Marilia then told the nurse that there had been a mistake, that she was fine, and just needed to go home. She requested that they call her son, so he could pick her up. The nurse told her that it was not a mistake. 
as it was her own son who had requested hospitalization. My son? This can't be. I'm lucid and in good health. Madame Aurelia, I'm sorry, but I'm just following the rules, and there is a medical report indicating your mental instability. Therefore, you need to take this medicine. Marilia was amazed. She wanted to wake up from that dream, but with each passing minute, she realized that unfortunately everything was real. What is the name of the doctor who prescribed the medicine? Marilia asked the nurse. His name is Lucas. At that moment, Marilia started to feel bad. His head was spinning, and he felt immense pain in his heart. She was in shock, and she could barely breathe. Seeing the woman's situation, the nurse immediately came to her aid and placed some medicine under her tongue to calm her down. Quickly, with tears in her eyes, Marilia fell asleep. Lucas had issued a report certifying Marilia's insanity. He described that she had psychiatric problems, inherited from her mother. So that night before, as usual, Marilia took her sleeping pills, but without understanding anything, she woke up in a place she never imagined. Marilia didn't understand why her entire life was suffering, and at the end of her years, she would still have to live with this nightmare. A low blow from his own son. From the son I worked so hard to raise. What else should I expect from life? With tears in her eyes Marilia reflected, looking out the window, seeing that now, she wouldn't even have freedom anymore. Her days were increasingly melancholy and painful. The only thing that made him feel a little better was writing his book. Marilia did not take the medications given to her. The first opportunity she got, she threw the pills away. I wanted to remain conscious all the time. The son never had the courage to go visit her and explain why he had done that, and Marilia also preferred never to see him again. Every night Marilia cried softly, feeling the pain of betrayal and loneliness. Noticing that lady's sadness, a nurse at the clinic named Anna tried to console her. Over time, the nurse realized that Marilia was completely healthy, and a friendship began. Anna had also been through several difficult situations in her life, and shared her story with Marilia, who opened up about everything that was happening. Anna thought it was all absurd, and was shocked by such cowardice on Marilia's son. On a certain day, Marilia made a risky request to nurse Anna. She asked her to help her escape from that place. Anna was surprised by that request, and explained that she understood the situation, but she couldn't help her, as she would be risking her job, and she had a young daughter to raise. Marilia understood the situation and apologized for the inconvenience, but that request wouldn't leave Anna's head. She thought about it for weeks. She kept putting herself in Marilia's shoes and knew that if she didn't help her, she would probably spend the rest of her life there. So on a certain night, during her shift, Anna helped Marilia leave that clinic, taking care that no one saw her leaving. She had planned everything carefully, and a car was waiting for Marilia at the clinic's door, so she could take her to nurse Anna's house. Anna decided to secretly shelter her in her house, as she knew that if her son found her somewhere from the city walking down the street, would immediately take her back to the clinic. The next day, the nurses at the clinic realized that Marilia had run away, and notified her son Lucas. The man was furious and asked for an investigation to be carried out, as he knew it was not possible to get out of there unnoticed, without someone's help. After a week, things seemed to be calmer, and to nurse Anna's relief, no one talked about the subject anymore. Marilia was extremely grateful that Anna had helped her. No one had ever been so good to her in her entire life. The two had a great relationship and had a similar life story, as Anna had also been abandoned by her husband and was raising her nine-year-old daughter Laura alone. Laura loved meeting Marilia and soon began to consider her like her grandmother. While Anna went to work, the two stayed at home keeping each other company. Finally, Marilia felt a little happy and loved, despite everything her son had done to her. But she didn't want to remember the past, and now she was just focused on helping raise little Laura and helping Anna with the housework. No one could find out that Marilia was there, so she avoided leaving the house. Anna returned from work at 6 in the morning, but on a certain day, everyone was surprised, as it was around 8 p.m., and Anna was already at home. She arrived very sad and announced that she had been fired. 
as they discovered that she had helped Marilia escape. Marilia began to cry, as she did not want to be the cause of the problems in that house, and was very sorry for what had happened. She wanted to go back to the clinic and testify on the nurse's behalf, saying it wasn't her fault, so they could rehire her. But Anna didn't let her do that, and said that she didn't need to apologize or worry because she would quickly get a new job and everything would be fine again. And so Anna did. She went out every day, looking for a new job. Another week had passed, and Anna was still unemployed. Marilia could feel Anna's despair, even though she tried to hide it, saying that everything was fine. Marilia felt anguished, carrying with her the weight of guilt for that situation. She tried to imagine a way to help her, and wanted to buy some food for home, but her retirement card was in Lucas' care, making it impossible for her to receive it. Looking out the window, Marilia saw the flowers in the garden and had an idea. After Anna left home, and taking advantage of Laura being at school, Marilia picked some flowers, made an arrangement, and went out to sell. She wanted to get a little money to help with household expenses. After all, everything that was happening was her fault. Marilia took the flowers and headed to an area where her son would hardly pass. There she offered the flowers to pedestrians passing through the place. She spent the whole day selling the flowers, and there were only a few left to finish. She was very excited. After all, her plan was working. It was around 5 p.m. that Marilia managed to sell all the flowers and was returning home. She couldn't wait to get Anna the money and help her with the expenses. Meanwhile, Anna had just arrived home with her daughter Laura. She was very happy and wanted to tell Marilia the news straight away, as she had gotten a new job, with much better pay than the previous one. Anna called for Marilia and looked for her around the house, but couldn't find her. He found it very strange, as she rarely went out. He thought perhaps she had gone for a walk and waited anxiously for her. But the hours passed and the night came, and Marilia never appeared. Anna began to suspect that Marilia might have left. She considered the possibility that Marilia had thought that it would be better this way, since there would be one less mouth for Anna to feed. Anna was extremely sad and worried about Marilia. I didn't want her to leave. He considered her as her mother, and Laura adored her too. She didn't understand why she had done this. He began to think that Marilia was cowardly, thinking about how much she had helped, so that in the end, she simply left that house, without even saying goodbye. Hurt, Anna turned on the TV to try to distract herself and forget the sadness she was feeling. When Anna turned on the news channel, she learned about something that had happened that made her world fall apart. The news was about a case of a woman being run over on a busy avenue in Lisbon. According to information, she was crossing the street when a speeding motorcycle hit her. Anna didn't want to believe it when she saw that that lady was Marilia. At that moment, she felt destroyed by the pain that consumed her. Unfortunately, Marilia did not survive and died at the scene. She took with her the gratitude and affection she had for Anna and little Laura, who were her family at heart. After a few weeks of mourning, and with an immense void in her heart, Anna decided to read the book that Marilia was writing, and was able to see her entire story there. Marilia was writing about her life, and about everything that was going on, and she had stopped at the part where she was going to sell the flowers. Thinking about keeping Marilia's memory forever, Anna decided to finish the book and write the end of that story. Unfortunately, it wasn't a happy ending, but Marilia's story deserved to be told. The book was published, and the story reached several countries, just as it is now reaching you. The story quickly reached Marilia's son, the renowned Dr. Lucas, as well as all his partners and co-workers, who began to repudiate the attitude he had towards his mother. Lucas then began to be seen in a different light, leaving him without clients and partners. His clinic quickly went bankrupt, and his name became engraved throughout society. Unfortunately, Marilia is gone, but your story will forever be remembered. Thanks for watching. Comment below what you thought of this story and which city you are watching us from. Leave your like and subscribe to our channel, so that together, we can build a huge community that shares inspiring stories. Until later.